is a Festival of Sourcing 2023. So um, we've given you all a, a little opportunity to get on board with the digital um, stuff. So hopefully you've got the GSA app and also Slido installed on your devices. So the GSA app will give you the entire running program, all the speakers, speaker profiles, and the agenda, and actually who's here over the course of this two-day festival. And I have to do a massive big up to our partner in Tetix. So the GSA app has been developed um, out of the Ukraine during the war. And last night <coughs> there was a glitch and the team stayed up all night to get the glitch back on. So um, huge um, big up to Intetix. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are still doing a slight corporate vibe, so there'll be a bit of whooping and cheering and we're not going to get it too um, festival vibe, we're not going to get it too corporate. So um, huge thanks to um, Intetix. Right, so what I'd like to do is start off with a little bit of an icebreaker. No? No? Manual page down? Yes? Okay, so sorry, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kerry Hallard, I'm the Chief Exec of the GSA. So, um, there's lots of opening slides. Right, first one, and I need you to put this into Slido. Which of the following images is the odd one out? So, hopefully, you're on Slido and I'll be able to see. The answers, and you're going to see the answers. Can you the slider code is 1446321. So go to sli, sli .do, and then it will ask you for a code, a hashtag code, which is 1446321. Okay, so which of the following is the odd one out? Go slow so you can put slide in as well. Okay, so you've been given five images, A, B, C, D, or E. They're all here as a refresher. Which of the following is the old one out? Oh, it's 10 days notice, so thank you all so much for accommodating the, the change in venue. And I kind of think it's a good thing, because I think being in a marquee today, when it's 30 degrees temperature without any AC, I think we all would have started. So it's all worked out in our favour. So yes, wonderful. Brilliant. Okay, and the answer is... That's really well done, brilliant. Right. I've got another ice breaker now. And I'd like you all to um, answer, well, first of all, can you put your hands in the air um, if you are right-handed? Wow, that's the last of people. Right, if you're left-handed, <coughs> if you're ambidextrous, nobody's ambidextrous, right. I'm going to ask you now a question, and I'd like you to answer that question with your non-dominant hand. Are you familiar with the term modern sourcing? 
non-dominant hand. Okay, <laughs> thanks Chris. Right, I'd now like you to shake hands with your neighbours using your non-dominant hand. <laughs> Getting lots of um, lots of words up here, but the, the really clear one is agile. Hope you can all see the tag cloud that's been built. But we've also got sustainable diversity, transparency, uh, efficiencies, impact sourcing, people, fair, innovative. Loads of loads and loads of words. Well, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive on the subject of modern sourcing. For me, modern sourcing encompasses all of these things. So yes, it is agile sourcing. It's all the new technologies that enable the sourcing process, whether it is, and I'm going to be the first one to use the term, which is going to use loads, whether it is the use of generative AI, or whether it is the different onboarding um, platforms that organizations are, are using. There is this move towards standardization, and I've got one copy with me here today. So the GSA has launched its industry standard terms for contracting for professional services and IT services. So one, one contract that the whole industry can be using to be a massive step forward. So standardization, key. Um, social sourcing, of course, sustainable sourcing, and also impact sourcing. So those are just some of the things that modern sourcing <coughs> encompasses for, for me. But more than this, the, 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 the focus on modern sourcing. I think right now we have a huge opportunity, a huge opportunity to drive a, a really big program of change for our industry. So yes, we're going to modernise sourcing, we're going to become more agile, we're going to become more social. But I've got a vision, and I've got a vision that I really believe that we can reposition this industry. This industry, which was previously known as the outsourcing industry, which was previously perceived as the industry of fat cats, of projects running over budget, over time, of jobs being sent offshore, all of the negative connotations that you know have, have, have marred our industry, which are our own truths. We all know that our industry is all about partnership, it's all about collaboration, and we, we really have demonstrated that through the way we partnered and came through the pandemic. But I think, more than that, we right now have an opportunity to really position our industry as an industry for good. Um, and I think that's just really nice positioning, really exciting position that we can change the perception. I think we actually, as an industry, are at the leading edge of so much proactive good stuff. So um, if we look at the ESG agenda, which obviously is going to be a, a main subject today, 
you know, environmental. I think our industry is pretty good at environmental. It's not massively impacted by environmental anyway. We're not in biohazardous waste or manufacturing. But yeah, we, we need to have green data centres. We need to have greener data centres. We need to look at the use of our canteens and no, you know, no single-use plastics and all of those sort of things. So I think as an industry, we're pretty good at the environmental piece. We're doing lots of environmental, socially good programmes, you know, we, we get them in our award submissions all the time, people clearing canals and picking up litter and all of those sort of programmes. So we know that our industry is committed to doing that. We know corporate social responsibility is cool, we've got good social programmes, we could do better, but we have good social programmes running across all of our buy side, but also all of our supplier side. Governance, the G, um, has always been very strong in our industry. You can't run an outsourcing program without really strong, good governance in place. So governance has been strong and is strong. But I think the area that we really shine, I think the area that is really, really important for our industry in the E, S and G is the social piece. We are, at the end of the day, a people industry. So we do put and have to put people first, and I think we have to demonstrate how other industries can actually learn from us and pe put people first. So DEI is front and centre of so many of our service providers' programmes. We've seen some really, really great programmes. Um, and, you know, there's a sorting tech interview with myself and um, Donna Kelly from CGI, really looking at exactly how you can put a really good DEI programme in place. So our industry is doing some really great work there. Supplier diversity is at last on the agenda, and tomorrow is a day completely and utterly dedicated to supplier diversity. And it's not just building diversity into our own supply chains, it is how we actually ensure that there is diversity in the supply chains of our suppliers. So it's looking all the way through uh, the supply chain there. And that obviously gives us an opportunity to remove modern slavery. So it's a startling statistic, and I only learned it last week when we were doing a briefing um, with um, an organisation called Slave Free Alliance that's speaking at our, our, um, at our day tomorrow. There are still 50 million people enslaved in the world today, which is absolutely shocking. So there is work to be done, and I think for our, for our industry looking at our supply chains, we can start making an impact on changing these figures. And lastly, I honestly do believe that the work that we're doing in impact sourcing and the way that we can actually put that on a pedestal and promote such great, great progress could help make a dent on the radicality of poverty around the world. So I know David and the Everest Group and the Everest Foundation, you've put a stat out that it's 500,000 impact workers to be employed in our industry by which year it is. 2025, I'm sure it's 2025. Um, but yeah, um, we, we, we are leading the charge with impact sourcing. Can you imagine all of these programmes, if, if the rest of the industries replicated this sort of work, you know, the, the impact it could have, and also you know, the way that we can absolutely showcase our industry as being a, a leading industry in all things ESG. But we all have to do it together. Every single one of us has got a responsibility to drive this change. Whether you're a buyer, whether you're a service provider, or whether you're an advisor, you need to be putting social, people, impact sourcing, sustainability, all of these things into your RFPs, into your contracts, into your governance structures with immediate effect. So um, that's my opening piece. Um, and without further ado, I want to hand over to our first keynote speaker, who will start bringing modern sourcing to, to life. One thing I haven't done, which I really should have done, is do a big up to Evershed Sutherland, who absolutely saved our bacon um, to, today. So, um, in festival spirit, can we just do a big up to um, Evershed? <laughs>
from Everest.